Alright, uh, behind me I have four pallets and uh, one broken down pallet. And over the next couple of days I'm going to use these to build a head gate for our sheep. In order to make the base for the pallets to sit on, I'm cutting some dados out of some of this other pallet wood. Probably the easiest and the safest way to do this is with your table saw. Um, if I were making fine furniture, I would have used a, a dado stack on my table saw. And I probably would have made a sled as well. You could also easily use a hand saw for this. I'm using a skill saw just because it was fast and it was fun. The, uh, the, the finish will be a little bit rougher, but that's, that's okay. It's going to be outside. It's going to be on the ground. I make the dados by cutting slots in places for the pallets to sit on. Uh, afterwards, I'll use a hammer and chisel to uh, knock, them off, knock the slots off to kind of give me a uh, semi-smooth surface to set the pallets on. You could definitely go further than I did and uh, sand it or use a chisel a lot more to smooth the areas out. Uh, also, if you were using a uh, table saw, you could easily do it too. You'll see a um, you'll see a clip after I finish with the chisel and the hammer, of where I just kind of test out using the skill saw to smooth it out. Uh, it's actually pretty dangerous. I I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you have some sort of rail for your skill saw to slide on, or as long as your cut is smaller than the base of your skill saw, it'll work fine too. Keeps knocking this yeah. way. Yeah, it's okay. Dad, this is a cool gun. Am I right? Oh, yeah, that's the best. Dad, look. You stab them in um, where their heart is and then blow their heart out. Oh, wow. Cool, uh, cool right? That's the coolest. That's the coolest I know of. Dad, and get it, this latches on to the inside line. Oh, ribbon. That's cool. <laughs> wow, that was, that was so funny. Oh, <laughs> Daddy! That one just flew off on its own. Fly back on the camera. You want to see that again? Yeah. Well, this one may. We'll see. Nah, maybe not. <laughs> you got it that time. Yep. Wait, try to do that part. Okay, now you're. Oh, I'm gonna laugh if it hits the camera again. Dang it. Oh, that one almost got the camera. Oh, that one did get the camera. That one, that one's on there, on there. Dad. Yeah, I have a little one up. 
Oh, I'll hold it since that fell off. Alright, the, uh, the actual assembly was kind of annoying doing it by myself and uh, also out on the uneven ground. So there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of resetting, trying to make sure that I have everything level and straight or close enough to it. Um, but it, it wasn't too bad. I got through it. You'll see in the video a lot of times where I'm dropping a board here or drop my level falls or this or that but it it came together in the end Alright, I've got the frame put together. Uh, now is the time to begin assembling the actual head gate, which will be right here. I've got most of my wood already cut, ready to get started. All right, um, I, I noticed on some of the footage that kind of partial construction of the head gate was out of camera. So I wanted to kind of show what I was building real quick. The movement part is this pole with the chain. And so it'll lay open. It's not uh, stationary like the other one. It's just held in place with a screw hole and a bolt right here. And we have different screw holes depending on the size of the sheet that we're going to be doing. So you have the sheep come through, you pull the chain, and you hook it you hook it on this hook right here. And that holds them in place so you can work them, you can do what you had to do. Um, also cut out this section of board so we could reach in and work them easier. Kind of all that's left is to, I'm going to add a, a, a wooden rail right here so we can stick boards 
all the way through to keep the sheep from backing out but kind of what we're doing right now uh, it isn't necessary just yet excuse my breathing it is a cold wet morning so I'm sure I sound kind of sniffly and breathing heavy but yeah that's how it works I said it is we have different screw holes so we can adjust it for full grown versus smaller ones and we'll see we'll see how it kind of holds up um, I did notice the uh, I use six inch lag screws to bolt the head gate assembly to the pallets and they were actually a little bit too much I think if I redid it I would use four or five I went with six because in my original design these two boards here were two by fours but I ended up salvaging extra some pretty strong boards off of the other pallet that I broke down so I think next time I'll just do that but other than that it's, it's pretty sturdy it uh, seems like it's gonna work pretty well I mixed up uh, two-in-one epoxy to affix the chain to the bar to the actual moving head gate bar and I also used it to affix a threaded dowel into the top uh, this is where I screwed the hook that holds the chain in place All right, well, it got dark on me so I'm gonna have to finish up in the house and I'm gonna do that by talking about how I finished the uh, head gate okay uh, anyway, I used Thompson's water seal and kind of the uh, the funny story about finishing the um, the head catch was that I pretty much built it in, in a day. I wrapped up, you know, right before having to pick the kid up from school. And I remember thinking, it was like, okay, it's together. All I have to do is put some water seal on it. I'll do that later. So I picked the kid, kid up, we have family stuff. You know, it's around 8.30 that night. We're getting ready for bedtime, and we're, we're getting our clothes ready for school the next day. So I double-checked the weather on my phone, and we're about two hours out from a pretty big rainstorm, and it's supposed to continue, at least intermittently, for about the next three or four days. So 8.30 at night, I grab my jug of Thompson's, and I run outside to hurry up and get some water seal on the head catch before it rots, before I can even use it. You know, I ended up getting a, a pretty pretty decent coverage. But on the way out there, I, I was thinking about, you know, what do I need to focus on to really give, like, a, a he heavy coats just to make double sure. Uh, give it as much, as much water seal as possible, a chance to soak in and to begin to cure and everything else. And I came up with three kind of ideas or three areas that, that I really, really focused on. And then afterwards, I, I went over the whole thing real quick with just a, a cursory uh, coat. It ended up okay, though. Uh, I think the weather was off by a couple hours, so it, I had a little bit more time than we thought. But anyway, um, kind of the three areas that I focused on, if you know you kind of have a crappy, uh, if you only have time to do sort of a, a, a crappy, um, rush seal job uh, first off was anything that makes ground contact that's where you know a lot more water is uh, dirt that's that's where you know it where it's sitting the moisture on the ground at that area it's not really going to dry on it as it will on the top of whatever it is you're covering so anything with ground anything that touches the ground should be first, I think. Uh, second up is the end grains, uh, the ends of all the boards, right? All the ends of the boards, because that is where that's the the chief place that wood uh, soaks in moisture is the end grain. So I hit kind of my uh, runners on the floor of the head gate first, because they were on the ground. Then I went through and I, I sloshed it and wiped it all uh, all over all of the ends of the boards, really thick. And kind of the third one is, is really dependent on whatever your project is or what, what you're doing, and that's the important parts. So there's there's really three parts of the head catch you just watched me build. There, there are two pallets, 
And then there's the uh, head catch apparatus that I build out of two by fours and hardware. I don't the the pallets are easy to replace. Uh, they were free. I just I didn't really even do that much to the pallets. I just built stuff around them to make them uh, stable together. But the head catch was a lot of work. Um, there's a lot a lot of screws and bolts and uh, any any precise cutting that I did was done there. And that's also where where the animal is going to be, so where the force is going to be at. So I really got the uh, the head gate really well too. Um, and like I said, it ended up having a little bit more time, so I was able to do a little bit better than a cursory coat over the rest of the over the head catch. Um, so it ended up not being that bad. But that was that was kind of what I came up with at 8:30 at night, uh, just running into the backyard with my Thompson's water seal was. Uh, Number one, uh, anything that touches the ground. Uh, number two uh, would be the end grains or end, ends of boards. And then uh, number three is the um, most important or most uh, technically functioning part of, of whatever your project is. And so that's, uh, that's how I finished it. Um, we're almost finished with the video. We're go next up, we'll see if it works or not. It turns out it was impossible for me to hold the camera properly and to pull the chain at the correct time as you see here but in the end the head gate did work all right go You're free. Kind of. You're free-ish. <laughs> <laughs>